Hi, I'm Mark Ryan, and in this video we're going to look at how we can use the GPT-3 system to navigate the New York City subway. A few months ago, I published a video showing how I created a harness that used the GPT-3 system to navigate the London Underground. And the purpose of this project is to take the same harness with no code changes, only the addition of new prompts for the New York City subway and new tests for the New York City subway and see if GPT-3 can navigate the New York City subway. Actually, it's not the entire subway we'll be looking at. We'll just be looking at the subset in Manhattan, but that's challenging enough as it is. We'll feed into the harness, into the Python code, CSV files that contain a list of the questions and answers for New York City subway navigation. The questions will state a question like how to get from Franklin Street to South Ferry, and the answer will be the line to take and the stations to go from and to. In addition to a CSV file containing training prompts, we have another CSV file that has tests to exercise the harness. These tests include questions such as how to get from 23rd Street to 14th Street and the expected answer. We'll see in a little bit how the system deals with this and what kinds of answers it provides for the questions it gets asked. And now we're going to exercise the harness with the New York City test cases and see how it does. The test cases are being fed in and we'll see the results for each of the test cases. Along with the expected results. And that's it. It's run through all of the test cases. So, how did GPT-3 do? It got about two-thirds of the test questions correct and about a third wrong, allowing for a little bit of leeway for some of the questions that were a bit ambiguous. How does this compare to GPT-3's performance with London? Well, it was a little bit worse, but considering the New York, the New York subway system is far more complex than London's and includes things like express lines, it's not bad. One of the questions that I asked myself is whether there's more material in the training that was done on GPT-3 about the New York City subway than there was about the London subway. I don't know what the answer is to that, but based on the performance between these two cities, I think the amount of training material was probably roughly the same between the two of them. New York's Transit Authority, the MTA, publishes this fantastic interactive subway map. I'll include a link to this map in the description for this video. And I use this map a lot in the process of creating this video. Here we're going to zoom in and take a look at Manhattan. As you can see, you can see individual lines. We see lines that are parallel, the direction of lines, and it's really a fantastic, I call it a world-class way to examine a subway system, particularly one as complex and challenging as the New York system. And that's a summary of the experiments that I did to see if GPT-3 was capable of navigating the New York City subway given a few prompts. The results weren't fantastic, but I am gladdened by the fact that I was able to use the same Python harness that I used for the London subway with the New York City subway with no modifications. It's also impressive that GPT-3 is still generating a lot of interest. We're coming up to almost a year since it was brought out. I believe we're going to hear a lot more about GPT type models and I look forward to see how they're going to change the world. Thanks for watching.